Good morning, I say from my couch at 11 o'clock at night. I just got done editing this video. We're going to call this one Brock's Special. And you can decide whether that uh, apostrophe is a possessive apostrophe or a contraction apostrophe. But um, Brock came to work today, filmed a whole lot of stuff. I had over an hour of footage. I got it trimmed down to like a little over a half an hour. So it's all Brock. Enjoy. Hello, uh, I'm back to the farm after my couple days off here. Um, Nathan just pretty much told me what to do here on the 8R, sliding under it. He went to change the oil in the bottom here, this arm here, pipe that has hydraulic oil going through it and we're leaking right here. So we got to take this off. He got an O-ring for both ends just to be safe, even though it's only leaking out of the one. We do have a bucket here. It is about halfway full. And there should be about 20 gallons, maybe a little bit more, in this sump. So this is the bottom of the hydraulic reservoir. It's all going to drain out. So it's, it's going to make a mess. But I'm going to get a couple more buckets here. And we're going to take two bolts off of the block right up here here's one and the other ones on the top side up there if you can see it but that's what's holding this on we're gonna take that off drain the oil and put the new o-rings on so we are under the tractor here and I'm gonna break these two bolts loose right up here one right there and one on the top up here um, and we're gonna see how much oil comes out and how fast. I hope it doesn't come out too fast. I'm not going to pull the pipe completely off of or completely out of this sump here. Um, we're going to hope that it goes up slow and I have enough time to put a new bucket under there before we spill all over the floor. But that's just one more mess I don't want to have to clean up. So these bolts are broken loose. It is dripping and I don't know if I got any on me but I guess there it comes. It's coming out of the other end than Nathan told me. So that's what we're going to prepare and let it drip for quite a while. At least this gives me some time to get a funnel set up for this front section. And we're going to do that now. Well, sorry you missed it, but I don't know if you can believe it or not, but I made a mess. There's some more oil on the floor, but it is draining. It is draining from up here rather than back by where the camera is, which makes it a little easier because I can get buckets in and out up here a lot easier than I can back there. But I had to make a mess first. So this bucket is about full. We're gonna wait till it's full. I got an empty one here. We're gonna slide in then we will take the lid off this other one and try to not make another mess. But a little oil on the floor, not a huge deal. We'll just have to add some more when we fill it back up. Nathan spilled some, so I figured I could spill some. What the heck? So I got four buckets out there. Three of them are completely full. This one right here is two thirds to 75% full. 
that was the one that Nathan had under here before. He's like, oh yeah, just let the oil go into that funnel, it'll drain, it's slow enough. Well, he didn't tell me that that funnel had a filter on it, or a screen, and it was overflowing out the top. So, made more of a mess. But, went and got this bucket here, and a drain pan. We're not saving the oil that's in the drain pan. I didn't clean it out, I just wanted something quick. I did clean this bucket out, so we're draining the rest of this into the bucket here. It should all fit. I'm not preparing another bucket. So what doesn't fit into this bucket, which is filling up rather quickly, is going to go into the drain pan. And hopefully it all fits in there because, yeah, we are running out of space to put stuff. And sorry I did not record that, but my arm is now drenched in hydraulic oil. It is still draining. So I'm gonna get out of here and maybe move this bucket because that drain pan is filling up quick. It's starting to slow down, at least I think, I hope. But we'll get it done. Don't come up here to stay clean. So we'll get it done and uh, we'll get back with you. So I brought the piece of pipe that was leaking and I just took off over to the bench here and our parts dropped. We got the O-rings and it looks like we also got a rear view mirror, which I know why and um, I'll take responsibility for it. I believe it's that right there. You see that big crack in it? My fault. It, uh, that happened when I buried this tractor the first, I don't know if it was early last year or late the year before that, but I buried it with the disc in the call packer, and when I went to go all, take off again, I got a little too close to the woods, but I still have a job. So I took the old o-ring off, it's a little egg shaped, it's flattened out. Um, the taking off and putting it back on after a couple years is not really the best and for five bucks you might as well get a brand new one. So that's what we're doing now that he knows it leaks. But we got one for each end. This one just uh, seats on this little lip there, I don't know how well you can see that, but the other one actually goes up in the tractor and this pipe slides in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this up really well. It doesn't seem too bad now, but we're gonna probably put some Vaseline or something on it so it slides into the O-ring while it's in the tractor because I can't really see it once it's on. So we're gonna seat this and then hope for the best when we slide the pipe on. But this one out here, we're gonna like wipe down the groove so it's, it's fairly clean, as clean as it's probably gonna get. And we'll put the new O-ring on and probably slide the pipe on before the tractor is completely done draining. It's only dribbling, so I'm not too worried about it, but yes. All right, here's the O-ring that was up in the tractor. It doesn't look too bad. So I'm wondering why it was leaking. I don't know if it was just not seated well or what, but it's still got some spring to it I guess it's not really that flat it's not I don't know if you can see the difference in these two but one is a lot flatter than the other but where Nathan said it was leaking was this one which is the the better of the two so let's hope that both of the new o-rings fix it but the buckets are filling up quick so I'm gonna put some Vaseline on the end of that pipe there and we're gonna get it in place before I have more full buckets and no more room to put the oil. So I don't know how well you can see, um, but we're gonna have to get it done because these, these buckets are filling up. But I did get Vaseline on the end of this pipe here that I'm gonna have to bring around somehow. The end of this pipe. So I'm gonna slide this end in to the tractor and then move the flange up to the front there 
and try not to get any dirt or anything to contaminate the pipe. And it's not just going to slide right in. Which I wouldn't expect to because that would be way too easy. So, I will be right back. Please, pipe, don't fall. And Thank you, pipe, for not falling. But, uh... We're not gonna hit it hard. The last thing I wanna do is score that O-ring or anything like that. But. It's gotta go in somehow. There we go. Thank goodness. So, that went in, that was, I would say, pretty easy compared to what it possibly could be. And it looks like I missed some dirt under the tractor, but uh, we will make sure this O-ring is still seated well on the end of the pipe, which it does appear to be. I will probably get a little oily, which at this point, I don't care. Okay, that is up to the face of the, the O-ring is touching, kind of, it's not snug, but it's just touching. So we're going to work this one up and work them in evenly. And that one is snug. So, let's hope it doesn't leak and we're going to add the oil back in. I will see you guys here on the top side. So while I'm still catching my breath, just thinking, Nathan said there's probably 20 gallons that'll probably come out. And they say you learn something new every day. And the first thing I've learned today, don't trust Nathan's estimates. We have five, 10, 15, 20, about 24. I bet there's two or two and a half in there. So 26 and a half and probably I'd say probably a gallon and a half on the ground. So we got 28 gallons. And I know, you know, you're only talking eight gallons, but when you're underneath the tractor, need funnels in a tight space, eight gallons makes a mess. So tip one of the day, don't trust Nathan's estimates. So now it's time to add the oil back in. With this three point arm here in the quick attach, it's going to be hard and kind of tiring to hold the bucket up there because obviously funnel, it funnels down and takes longer to pour a bucket. And with as much as we have to put in, I'm coming up with a different plan. So I got a pallet, put all the oil on the pallet. We got a forklift. So I'm going to lift the forks in the pallet up somewhere in this area where it's comfortable, comfortable for me to pour into there. So, I'm up here on the forklift. Funnel's down there. Now all I'll be able to do is just hold the bucket and pour. I won't have to hold it all the way up high, up at chest level. I'll just be able to maybe even lean it off the pallet here. That'd make it nice. I'm trying to think. Make life easier. Use the tools that we got. Well, I just put 20 gallons in. I can see the oil on the sight gauge. So Nathan said, once you can see it on the sight gauge, um, check underneath. If it's still not leaking, start the tractor up so it can um, pull the oil back through everything that we drained. And I left my light out there. Let me see if I can find my phone to use light. And let's hope nothing is leaking. 
So that's the front part. And that's my pager. I don't think that's me. Nope, not me, so don't care. But here and that's not looking too bad. That's pretty clean. The shine there is the Vaseline. So that's not leaking. There I don't know. There is a little shine down there at the bottom, but again, it could just be that it was left over. I was able to tighten them down just a little bit more. And we will start the tractor up, let it pull some oil through the system, and Hope it doesn't leak. Sorry for not explaining, but when I refer to the sight gauge, it's this back here. Um, it's this tube right here that is on. It's kind of hard to see, but the oil is down right there. I can see it, so I know it's somewhat full. There's enough to, to suck it through the system, and I don't want to fill it completely up because if we have to drain it again, that's just that much more I'd have to drain. Well, you guys can tell, but it sucked that fluid right down, so it's no longer in the sight gauge. I'm going to let it run for about a minute, and uh, then I'll sneak back underneath the tractor and take a peek and hope for the best. Well, here's the moment of truth. We're sliding back underneath the tractor. Please, please, please don't be dripping. flashlight back out and this spot up here looks good that spot there looks pretty good I'm not too mad about that I might have Nathan just come down and verify because again, I'm not really in the mood to drain all that oil. But we will leave it be. It's not that hard to put oil in it. Uh, we got another project. We're gonna move on to the front tires. Gotta check the oils and the hubs. So see you up there. So for these front uh, hubs, what we actually gotta check is on the inside of this. So all the way up in there there is a plug over on that side that you got to take out so that means you got to take the outer tire off and the spacer to get to it uh, i did this last year it, it's not that hard it just takes some time thank goodness we got these straps and the ho overhead hoist it makes it a million times easier so first we got to jack up the, the front of the tractor though so we can spin the tires to get the oil level marks where they need to be. Um, but there's some jacking points underneath the front arms right up there. So we're going to put some jacks under each front independent suspension, jack it up and get them off the floor. Well, sorry, I forgot to film it. But put the uh, rope or strap through the tire there uh, up to the hoist, took the lugs off, and it's free. So we're gonna lift it up and 
now it'll go anywhere I want it to. I'm just going to pull it off here to the side, set it down, and take that inner hub off. So I got the spacer off. That's what the tractor looks like with out front duals. A little bit narrower, looks a little bit different. But this is where we check the hub oil. We're gonna check the level first, even though we're gonna change it. I wanna make sure it's not leaking or um, it's, it's low. If it's low, it's low for a reason and we gotta find out. But we're gonna check it, change it, and put everything back together and then do the other side. So I got the plug out and as I rotate this, that oil level should be flat when oil is right about to come out and at that point right there so it's leaking out that's right there where it's at the threads it's maybe a little low but when you look back that's pretty flat so I'm not worried about it. I don't think this is one's leaking. This isn't the one that I've seen a whole bunch of oil around the inside of the hub. So I think on this one, we are good to change it and just put everything back together. And that's what we're gonna do. So I got the oil draining, pretty much all the way drained out there. Um, I took the plug, cleaned up the O-ring, cleaned up the um, plug itself. It doesn't look too bad. Um, but we're gonna put it all back together. It takes 3.8 quarts of GL5 gear lubricant, which is just 80, 80, 90 weight gear oil. But it's just John Deere's way of being fancy and selling it to you for high price. But, so, I guess it's four quarts, sorry. Four quarts for each hub. That's what we'll put in it, and we'll check it before we put it all back together. But pretty straightforward. Just keep refilling that can, refill it twice, and it should be full. So I just put the four quarts of oil back in it, and I leveled it out, and it's right, it's right there. So it's perfect. We're going to put this plug back in right here, put it in the hole and put the spacer on, put the tire on, and move to the other side. Sorry for not filming, but the GoPro is really running low on battery. It died, so I wanted to charge it because I wanted to show you on this side and try to catch if we can see how low this side is, if it is even low. But I got the plug out, got everything off, setting off the side over there. But this is the side that we saw oil on the inside of the hub on when we were cleaning it. So we're gonna rotate this until we see oil coming out. Again, I don't know when that's gonna be. Right there it is. So, I guess it's not too bad. Yes, it's a little low, but it's not as bad as what I thought. But this side, for some reason, let's set the camera down, sorry. This side seems to be a little darker. I don't know if there's something in it. I don't see any sparkles or anything. So that's good, but. 
hello back so soon and I don't like what I'm seeing started draining it obviously I told you it looks a little darker I'm gonna set the camera down and see if I can you're gonna look down for a second let's see if I can catch it can you guys see those sparkles yeah I could see quite a few sparkles when I was draining it and it makes me a little worried but I'm just the work hand so I'm gonna let Nathan know and we'll probably change it but something else will probably have to get fixed on it yeah but I just wanted to show you that I do check many different things when we're servicing it it is very important it's something that you could have changed just change the oil not worried about it and in another i don't know how many hours we could be having big problems so i just went down to nathan's house to talk to him he said don't worry about it so we're just going to drain the oil fill it back up he's not too concerned so i'm not concerned i do what he says so off to draining it again back on the spacer back on oil back in it I think all we need to do as far as these front axles is lower it back down to the ground I did put the last bucket that we had in the tractor that we drained out of it while that hub was draining and you can see the oil in the sight gauge so that's good but when I uh, put the front of the tractor back down, I'm going to start it up, let it run for a couple minutes and see if it uh, sucks any more oil out of that sump. If I need to add more oil, I will, most likely I will. Um, but we're, we're wrapping the service side of this tractor up. So I got most of the floor cleaned up as far as tools and rags. And I just ran the tractor for about a minute or two just to get some more oil to flow through the tractor. It looks like I do need to add some more. I can't see it on the sight gauge. So we're gonna come over here to the pump, if that's what you wanna call it, the hose, and put some more hydraulic oil in it. I don't know how much it should take. It shouldn't take more than, I would say three gallons but we're gonna fill it up till we see it in the sight gauge and probably run it again to make sure it doesn't go down. If it does, we'll fill it back up until it stays in that sight gauge. So we're under the front of the tractor here in between the two front tires and we noticed a little bit of an oil leak or a lot of bit of an oil leak and you got all these solenoids. So there's probably an O-ring bad in one of them but which one so that's what we're gonna do right now since I filled it all back up with oil uh, we can pressurize it by just turning the tractor on so we're gonna clean out all the big stuff then I got some brake clean we're gonna clean the small stuff and then hopefully we can pinpoint which solenoid is leaking and just replace the o-ring and hopefully that fix it fixes it um, but it looks like whoever cleaned this tractor, me, did not do the best of the job underneath it. There's still a lot of gunk and crap and stuff that you just don't see, so you don't think of. Nathan also said on this one, if we do find the one bad solenoid, if we do take it out, it should just dribble maybe at most. I don't know how much I believe him. 
because he also said that there's only going to be 20 gallons of hydraulic oil in the tractor yet, and there's 28. But if we find the right one, then we'll attempt we'll to change it. But I'll let you know when we get there. So I got this block cleaned up as best as I could. And so I'm going to go start the tractor, let it run a little bit, and probably turn the wheels left and right. I don't know if that is ran through this block or not, but hopefully it pressurizes the system and I'll be able to find the leak because I know there is one. I'm not hoping that there's not one. I know there's one. So hopefully I'll be able to find it and fix it. So as you can hear, the tractor's running. I got back under here to see if I could find which solenoid's leaking and I don't know if you can see it, but it's this one right here. It's leaking right out the end of that. So I'll let Nathan know and we will try and get it fixed. I don't know. I don't know what all that entails as far as changing just an o-ring or if the whole solenoid needs going through I, I don't know um back here at the sight gauge again and it went down again but i turned the wheels both ways i raised the pto and lowered it back down the sight gauge is also Oh, right there, I can see it. There's oil in the bottom of it. So it shouldn't take that much. I pretty much cycle it through the entire system, but just to top it back off. So it's about five. I was gonna do one more thing before I left, and that was replace the mirror that I broke. I took the old one off and got the new one out, and Nathan ordered the wrong one. So, that's gonna wait the one we got is or the one that was on the tractor is a electric adjust and the one he got was a manual you want them to match which is perfectly fine we're not in no rush to use this tractor so we'll just wait until he gets another one so as i'm wrapping it up here i'm getting ready to go home um if you have any questions for me, want me to film anything uh, specifically in the shop, let me know. Put it down in the descriptions or comments, sorry. I read them. I do comment on some of them, not all of them. I'll try to answer any questions that you have for me, about me, within reason. Um, but again, if you want me to film anything specifically in the shop, what I do, Go right ahead and let me know. Thanks, Brock. Thanks, Nathan. See, I pay him. It's always good on payday. Well, that was something, wasn't it? Um, a couple of things. One, all I did was tell him where it was leaking and how to get to the O-ring that was leaking. I did not tell him that was how you drained the oil. Uh, I thought he had watched my video and saw me pull the plug or would read the book mostly to pull the drink plug it would have been a lot easier but it worked it's fine you got it good job rock and uh uh two i said i think my guess is there's about 20 gallons that's going to come out i didn't really know and i said i don't know so don't blame me there but uh, anyway thanks brock really appreciate you taking care of that today while i was working on my floor stuff uh, i am going to do a video tomorrow with my flooring and everything else that I filmed today and tomorrow. And we'll just combine it into one since this one got so long anyway. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave Brock lots of comments down below, down there. And if you have any questions, comments for me, leave them. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you again tomorrow.